Welcome to the World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. Each week, we'll have tips from former number one, Ivan Lendl, a roundtable with the best journalists in the sport. And each week, someone will be holding court with Justin, hanging out, talking about anything and everything. This week, it's Andy Roddick, talking the Hall of Fame, the future of his game, and his wife, Brooklyn Decker. Nothing's off limits with Justin Gimmelstab, next. The World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas, starts now. Andy, Andre Agassi is getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. What has his career and his friendship meant to you? Well, I mean, he was, uh, he was a huge mentor for me, especially when I first uh, started playing on tour. Um, you know, it's always a, a little bit of a surreal situation when you develop a kind of a personal friendship with someone who you grew up idolizing. You know, I was, I was the kid with the with the jean shorts and the biker shorts underneath. Not and a great look, no, by the way. Bad retrospect, <laughs> it was a bad look, but I, I completely bought in when I was eight or nine years old. So, uh, no, I mean, it, he, was, uh, he was a big part of uh, the early years for me. And then you ended up playing him. You had some epic matches. You beat him a bunch of times. He beat you a couple of times. What is it about his game that presented challenges? A bunch of times, meaning once. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's the same thing for everybody. I mean, he's, you know, in, in, in the conversation for being the best ball striker of all time. Well, you had some epic matches with him. I remember when you were in Houston, you were up a, set in a, up a set in a break in the finals of the U.S. clay courts. Lost that one. Lost that one, so yep. yeah, that's why I brought it up. Yep. Uh, Cincinnati, an epic three tiebreaker yeah. match. Yep. Had that one work out? It didn't work out that well. There's a common, that's, that's there's a, why I there's a, there's a common theme to all of these epic battles that we had. But he does have a, a significant hand into one of the biggest efforts of your career, which was he lost the semifinal to Juan Carlos Ferrero mm -hmm. when you won the U.S. Open. And that, when you were watching that match, sure. how important, how much were you rooting for Ferrero knowing that Agassi was a much tougher matchup? Uh, it was weird because Andre is one of my favorite people, but selfishly, um, I would have rather played Juan Carlos just because, one, I could count on crowd support. You know, in, in the States, Andre's about the guy that I didn't want to, I wasn't going to get any support if I, if, if I played him, and for good reason. Um, you know, so that was one thing. Then the whole dynamic of, you know, the whole, media sensation if Andre's involved with anything. I was 21, I didn't really want to deal with that either. Um, it, was, it was an easier play for me to play, uh, play Ferrero. What would it mean to you to eventually be in, uh, in the, to get into the Hall of Fame? Oh wow, um, it'd be uh, a dream come true, it'd be very humbling. Um, you know, uh, luckily I still have, hopefully have a couple years to, <laughs> to put some numbers up, but um, you know, you never, I think when you start playing, you don't ever think of it in the context of I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. That seems too great, too grand, too you know, almost too too ambitious. And and so to to be in the conversation is humbling. And if 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 I ever did get the call, um, it'd be it'd be uh, it'd be amazing. Can I do your speech? <laughs> yeah. I don't I'm putting think, it out here right I don't, now. I don't. I don't. That's I, a request. I know it usually doesn't go like that. Usually you would ask them, but I, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if we would have that much time. You know, put you in front of a mic. We don't. You know, there's got to be some time restraints. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna say right now, if I have to say it, Andy Roddick is your first bad ball famer, as is Andre Agassi. There is more holding court with Justin a little later. Enough about me. I don't want to make it about me. I know. I don't <laughs> and thanks to our friends at Getty, this week's Images on Tour reminds us of all the memories and all the great moments Andre Agassi gave us throughout his career. Congratulations, Andre. Thanks, Getty, for the images on tour this week. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the world of tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. Now it's time to get back to Justin and Andy. Well, we're here with the man who has held the mantle at the top of American tennis for over a decade now. He's not even 29 years old, but it feels like he's been playing tennis, like you said, for 27 yeah. of those years. Where are you right now in your career? Uh. I don't know. 
Um, you know, I, I'm starting to get. Appreciate the candor. I'm starting. Well, <laughs> I'm starting to get that question a lot. You know, I guess Does you're, it you're you? getting. I know I'm not in. I, I'm probably in the, the last third of it. I don't know what exactly uh, that. I mean, no, it doesn't bother me at all. It's a, it's tennis is cyclical. You know, you, you there, there's a group in, there's a group out. Um, as long as I'm healthy, enjoying it, and, and feel like I can still win win tennis tournaments, I'm, I'm happy to play. As we look towards the summer in the U.S. Open, a place where you've won and had success, what still motivates you? Well, uh, you know, the, the thing about tennis is no one really cares about yesterday. So you wake up in the morning have to, having to prove yourself on that day, and uh, that's still enough for me. And uh, I think it will be until, until uh, when it's not, that's probably time to, to shut it down. You know, but I still like, you know, playing the younger guys and trying to beat them. and. Um, you know, I still enjoy winning tennis matches. I read an article about you, and yes, I'm going to take the joke out of you, your hands. You I agreed. Okay. I knew, knew that was coming. That's how well I know him. Yep. Is that uh, you haven't been too proud to adapt, mm -hmm. and that's been a key to your success, your longevity, your consistency, 10 years in the top 10. Sure. Um, elaborate on that. Well, I, I just feel like with the, with the guys that uh, I started with at the beginning of my career, with the, maybe the same age or the same generation, um, it's pretty much me and Roger that have, have, have are still kind of in the top ten. Um, for him, it's just he's the, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, for me, I've 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 had to adjust. You know what I did well then, maybe might not work now. I've had to get fitter, uh, run more, but I haven't been too proud to hear. You know my coach say, okay, you're you're too big now. You got to get in better shape. Okay, well let's do that. And I I, I feel like one of the reasons I'm still still here is, is because I haven't been too proud to, to make changes. I think I, I remember in 2008 in the World Tour Finals in Shanghai, I came in the locker room, you just lost to Andy Murray, 6-1 mm -hmm. in the third, yep. and you looked at me and you said, be honest, I'm fat right now, aren't I? Do you remember that? I do. And then that's when you went on that big <laughs> health kick and got in shape and reinvented your career, made it another great run, which then enabled you to make enough money to segue, see how natural the segue is, to building your dream house <laughs> okay. in Austin, Texas. <laughs> I've heard it has, I haven't been there yet, I'm inviting myself during the Davis Cup, <laughs> a man cave. Well, a man room. Not cave? Cave-ish? It's a, it's a little cave-ish. Okay. But Tell us about it. Tell us about the whole process of building a dream house. Not that no, a lot of people was, would know that you would be into architecture, design, and you were very hands-on. I, I, you know, kind of. I, I, I basically handled the parts that Brooke would let me. Let's talk about marriage. You you might have won a Grand Slam and number one in the world and won Davis Cup. But, there's but no by bigger far your achievement. bigger accomplishment. Okay. See, okay, he no. knows me well, too. But it, it's true. Every joke has a hint of truth. My mom has always told me this one is, is obvious. Yeah. Uh, tell us about Brooklyn. You're, you're so significantly better half. <laughs> I, man, can I just concur with the way you described it? Yeah, you can. I, 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 I concur. How about the courting process? Can you get us into the courting well, process? Well, it was, it, it, was, it, was it was a little stalkerish, yeah. but my uh, my line that I still believe in is, is it's 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 not stalking if she likes it. But it took her a while. Oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, there I, was there was an amb amb ambiguous period there where it there was. Do kind. I call the police or is he charming? Well, if that's by, what she told me. If by ambiguous you mean that it took her six months to call me back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that could be ambiguous. ambiguous yes, ambiguous. and then ambiguous. Just go with it. Yeah. You made a cameo. She did an amazing job. How proud. Are you of her to sometimes take the back the back seat and be Mr. Brooklyn Decker as opposed to her always being I just think Mrs. You, Andy Roddick? You know what? One of the you know more attractive things about her is that she is self motivated. You know, she she she'll, she loves to work and she loves she's passionate about something and uh, you know she's getting great opportunities and you know when uh, luck comes when hard work meets opportunity and you know she she certainly. Uh, Doing a, doing a great job right now. But the most unique part of the movie was at the end, you wore a very beautiful medallion yeah. that said, I love Justin. Mm -hmm. Now, my mom is convinced mm -hmm. that was a very conscious ode to our friendship and relationship. Uh, I think it was very consciously not that. Really? Yeah. Sorry. Strange coincidence. Uh, something that I knew you would probably see and run with. Right. Figured we might be having this conversation, conversation possibly in a public forum. Right. But no. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about something more important than all of this. You bet me last year mm -hmm. and I couldn't run the New York Marathon for my charity. Mm -hmm. 
first thing I ever beat you in, I, I won. Well, I wasn't racing. Right, but it was still conceptually a bet between us. Yeah, but me I versus won. you. Yeah, I mean, you won the bet. I was happy to donate to your charity, but I feel better with me versus you bets. Probably the best use of money that you've ever spent because there's no amount of pain, that, and I've, <laughs> I've experienced pain a lot. There's no amount of pain that I've ever felt. The amount of dollars per pain. Didn't Moresmo finish like 45 minutes ahead of you? She did. Nothing about me. I don't want to make it about me. I know. I, <laughs> I don't want to make it about me. But. <laughs> I do want to talk about. I do want to talk about golf. Ooh. And you, how, where, how where is your golf game these days? It's all right. Just all right. It's okay. Now, I'm going to give you some love because you are. I, we do joke, but Andy is one of the great philanthropists in our sport. I've been to his event a ton of times. Talk about what the Andy Roddick Foundation means to you. Uh, well, I mean, it's. it's uh, I think it's the best part of what I do. It's the best thing that. Uh, Tennis has, has brought me. Um, we help out a bunch of uh, at-risk youth, which is a is a fancy way of saying kids that haven't been dealt the best hand in in life. And uh, you know, we've raised you know uh, a lot of money for for these kids. And uh, I feel like we we make we we've, we've made a difference, and we're gonna try to try to continue it. Welcome back to the world of tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. Time for Justin's final three. You know more than anyone that being in an interview with me is you need an exit strategy. Yeah. And your buyout are three questions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is assuming that I would actually need a buyout and couldn't just walk right now. Exactly. That would be assuming that. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, first, if you had one last meal with anyone living or dead, who would it be? Uh, Muhammad Ali, because of my sporting idols, he's the one I have not met. Okay. And if you had one last meal, what would it be? Uh, some sort of Mexican baskets of chips and salsa. And if you weren't a tennis player, what would you be? I would be... A male probably, model? No. No, they, uh, no. I would be probably in my 12th year of undergrad, very Van Wilder-ish yeah, type. Van he is. He type is deal. Modern day Van Wilder. And they're also doing casting type for deal right uh, now. American Pie because you do have a very Stifler esque part. Yeah. Six, to you. 16, version 16. Andy, thank you for spending time. Thank you. The world of tennis. Thanks, guys. And thanks to our friends at Wilson. Here's a look at the upcoming ATP and WTA tour schedule. You haven't seen everything. There's more of Justin's interview with Andy. Check it out. See you next week on The World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas.